This lesson will focus on the types of tolerances. Our big concept for this lesson is that you will learn what a tolerance is, the types of tolerances, and how a tolerance is written. Let's start by taking a look at the types of tolerances. Since variation from ideal specified dimensions is inevitable, we need to indicate the acceptable amount of variation. In other words, we know that when a part's manufactured, it isn't going to be perfect. So we need to figure out how much we can allow it to not be perfect. This variation is called a tolerance. Adherence to a specification is only as good as the equipment used to manufacture the part and the device we use to measure the dimension. In other words, we can only be as accurate as the tools we use to both create a part and the device we use to measure the part. The more precision we use to specify a part, the more expensive the manufacturing equipment needed to produce the part to the specification, and the more expensive the measuring equipment needed to test the part. In other words, if we need a really, really precise part, it's going to cost a lot of money. To reduce cost, it's important to understand which dimensions of a part have to be within a tight tolerance and produce with a high precision, the more expensive parts, and which dimensions are less critical and can be, and can be produced less precisely, making them less expensive. Often, a designer must consider trade-offs between high precision and high cost. Consider the images below. Which product would require more precise dimensions or tighter tolerances to operate properly? The image on the left is of children's building blocks. The image on the right is meant to represent different engine parts for a space shuttle. Obviously, the children's building blocks require less precise dimensions and tighter tolerances than the engine parts, therefore making the children's building blocks easier to mass produce and more affordable. The engine parts would have to be incredibly precise and therefore very expensive. Let's take a look at how tolerances are formatted. So how do we tell the manufacturer what the acceptable range of a dimension is? We describe the acceptable variation using tolerance. There are three basic formats for tolerance dimensioning and that are used most often on working drawings to specify acceptable dimensions. We have limit dimensions, bilateral tolerances, and unilateral tolerances. Let's start by taking a look at limit dimensions. Limit dimensions provide an upper limit and a lower limit for the dimension. Any size between or equal to the upper limit or lower limit is allowed. Let's take a look at the example below. The upper limit dimension is 0.126 and the lower limit dimension is 0.125. That means any value between 0.126 and 0.125 would be an acceptable value for this specific dimension. Now let's look at bilateral tolerances. Bilateral tolerances provide an equal allowable variation, larger and smaller. They use a plus minus symbol to specify the allowable variation. In other words, a measurement can be plus a certain amount or minus a certain amount. Let's take a look at the example below. The counterbore depth can be 0 0.003 larger or smaller than 0.25. The hole location can be 0 0.05 larger or smaller than 1.5. You can see the first measurement right here. 0.25 is our base measurement and we can be plus 0 0.003 or minus 0 0.003. That means that we could actually be 0.253 and it would still be an acceptable value. Same thing down here. We have 1.5 plus or minus 0 0.05. That means that we could be 1.5 plus 0 0.05 or 1.5 minus 0 0.05 and still be in an acceptable range. Now let's take a look at a unilateral tolerance. Unilateral tolerances provide an allowable variation in only one direction, either larger or smaller. They use separate plus or minus signs to indicate which direction is allowed. Looking at the example below, you can see that our base measurement, 0 0.500, can be 0 0.004 over, but it cannot be smaller. The hole diameter may vary 0 0.004 larger, but may not be smaller, as we just stated. So let's do a little bit of practice. Identify the type of tolerance displayed in red. Your options are to identify it as a limit dimension, 
a bilateral tolerance, or a unilateral tolerance? I'll give you some time to figure this out, and then we'll go over the answers together. Alright, if you need more time, pause the video before we go over the answers. Looking at this first image here, that is a unilateral dimension. We can tell that it's unilateral because it only moves in one direction, uni meaning one direction, and lateral being direction. So we can go over by 0 .005, but we cannot be smaller. Looking over here, this is a bilateral dimension. We can tell by the combined plus and minus symbol. This means that we can be plus 0 0.002 or minus 0 0.002 from 1.170. Lastly, we have a limit dimension. This provides the maximum and minimum sizes. Remember that this means that any value in between these numbers or equal to these numbers is an acceptable value. So let's talk about a specified dimension. A specified dimension is the target dimension from which the limits are calculated, so essentially our base value. In this image, 1.50 is our specified dimension. Now let's take a look at limits. Limits are the maximum and minimum sizes shown by the tolerance dimensions. These are different than a limit dimension because these have to be calculated. The upper limit is the maximum allowable dimension, so therefore, the upper limit is the specified dimension plus the positive variance. In this case, it would be 1.55 because 1.50 plus 0 0.05 is equal to 1.55. The lower limit is the minimum allowable dimension and it's calculated by, sub, um, by adding the specified dimension plus the negative variance because it's technically a negative number. Now, we could also just subtract a positive value to get the lower limit. So, here we have 1.45 as our lower limit because 1.50 plus negative 0.05 is equal to 1.45. We could also just subtract 0.05 from 1.5. So how do we use limits to calculate a tolerance? Tolerance is the total variance in a dimension and is equal to the difference between the upper limit and the lower limit. So, in order to find tolerance, we subtract the lower limit from the upper limit. In this example, we have 1.55 minus 1.45, meaning our total tolerance is 0.1. Let's take a look at general tolerances. A general tolerance is a tolerance that is assumed if no specific tolerance is given for a dimension. Typically, tolerances are specified based on the number of digits to the right of the decimal point in a dimension. These are shown in a drawing in separate boxes and are indicated through annotation. Below you can see two examples of general tolerances. If this box were to be included in a drawing, it would mean that all angles inside of that product are that have a tolerance of plus or minus 0.5 degrees. Linear dimensions work a little bit differently. Again, we're basing it on the number of decimals placed aft to the right of the decimal point. So if we have three values, that means it has plus or minus 0 0.005. Now let's do a little bit of practice. We're gonna use this value right here for our practice. If you look down here at our general dimensions, we'll note that this has two decimal places to the right. So therefore it's the x point x x and it has a tolerance of plus or minus 0 0.010. Using that information, take a moment to calculate the upper limit, lower limit, and the overall tolerance for this dimension. If you need more time, pause the video now.
First, the upper limit would be 3.01. That is because we added 0.01 to 3.00. The lower limit would be 2.99. That's because we subtracted 0.01 from 3.00. And lastly, our total amount of tolerance or variance that's allowed for this dimension is 0.02. We calculated that by subtracting 2.99 from 3.01. So what happens when an object is out of tolerance? A manufactured part is said to be out of tolerance if the part is not within the specified limits. Manufacturing facilities often institute quality control measures to help ensure that parts are within tolerance. This means that if a part is outside of tolerance, it's rejected from the manufacturing process.